did want to mention our streaming channel this morning before I got started and I see this from the World Video Bible School and it's something that we don't really talk about too much but we've had several hundred thousand views on the channel and we have at least 35,000 or 3,500 people installed on Roku. Now we don't know if they're members of the church or if they're not members of the church. We have no idea. But I did want to encourage those that are watching the streaming channel, if you're not a member of the Church of Christ, to please find one in your local community. And we do have, through our website, a link that you can ask questions. And if you do want us to help you find a church, please send us that request and we'll, we'll do our best to find you a church as close to you as possible. So I just want to bring that out and and do that. But it, it is very amazing when you look at how many people have viewed through the two and a half, three years now that we've been doing this. So uh, this morning I want to talk a little bit on focus your faith. I want to start off with a uh, little story. There was a young man, roughly about eight years old or so, that started selling apples in his community. He was out there in the middle of, you know, kind of where I come from, the middle of nowhere. But he started selling some apples at a very young age. I'm just going to say eight. So he started selling these apples and then one day he got some pigs. So he started selling apples and pigs. And all of a sudden, before you knew it, he was raising some lettuce. So he would sell apples, pigs, and lettuce. And he got more and more pigs than what he could sell. So he started to butcher the pigs and sell bacon and sell ham and do all this stuff. Well, as he grew up, he got married to a very lovely young lady and they had a son. Well, this man who was selling apples and lettuce and bacon and ham also got some chickens and started selling eggs and then he got some cows and started milk before long he had this grocery store in the middle almost nowhere but what this grocery store did is it served the three communities around him and people found it very convenient and very wonderful to come to this store so they all came to this store well this man found God with his wife and his young man and he became very faithful and he prayed to God constantly to help him maintain this store and his store grew and more and more people came to it and he became very wealthy well it was time that he was getting up in age and he t turned to his son and he said son I want to give you this store and the son said okay I, 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 I'll do it he says but I want to tell you the key to running this store and that is always be faithful to Christ and the son said okay I understand that you've taught me that I will be faithful to Christ my whole life so it wasn't too many years after the father turned the store over to the son that this big chain grocery store came in and it says I'd like to buy your store and the young man was now married too and had a small child and another one on the way he says no this is this is how I make my living my father started this store and I'm not going to sell this store he says we will want this store I will make you a very wealthy man and the young man says I'm, I'm wealthy enough and he says well if you don't sell us this this store of yours we're going to buy the land right next to you and we're going to run you out of business. And the man says, okay. So he went and he prayed to God and he says, I'm going to keep my store. Well, in about a month, they started building this huge, gigantic grocery stores. You know, the kind that has everything <laughs> under the sun. Remember, this is just the small country store that we're talking about. But they went on. And about four or five months, they had this huge store up and it was ready to go and it opened up well after the first month the man sat down and did his books and realized that his business had tripled 
and the other store had just done what they thought they would do that his business had tripled in sales do you know what the two things the man did number one he focused his faith on Jesus and number two is he put a big banner over his entrance way that said main gate <laughs> so I want to take a look at our faith. Uh, we're going to read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 again because that is so amazing at the end. But first, I'd like you to turn to Luke 9, 62. It just came to me, and I, I just wanted to start this way out. I changed the whole entrance this morning, or the whole introduction this morning because of this verse. Luke 9, 62. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now I know Roy knows what, I, what I'm talking about when we talk about a plow. Um, Joe may know, but it's, a, it's something that isn't easy. Um, I learned very quickly when I was 14 years old and my dad put me behind a tractor on a plow that I was not cut out for that work in my life. It's hard, and you sweat a lot. But it's about, well, I'm a little bigger than I was then, so I'm gonna say it's about like that. And you push it down the ground, it has this thing, and it brings up, we, did, we dug our potatoes with it all the time. And it's tough. But what God is saying here is definitely a faith question to people. He's saying, once you grab a hold of that plow, and every farmer wants a straight line to put down their crops. But if you do not hold that line straight, your rows are going to be like this. Now, I tried to convince my dad you can get more in rows like this and you can't straight, but he didn't go for it. But you can't take care of the rows unless they're straight. So if you're on the plow and you lose focus, and all of a sudden you're over here versus going over here, and you're not looking straight forward, then you're not doing your job. So Jesus is saying, keep your faith. Look straight forward. Keep moving forward. Don't look back. Don't look side to side. But go straight. You know, Roy always says, go out of the parking lot, make a right, and keep straight. That's what we need to do. We need to keep straight. Faith is often difficult for the world that we live in to, to understand. But do you realize they have faith in a lot of things? You pull up to a restaurant chain and you hand them this piece of paper that has a five on it. And you expect them to give you a cheeseburger. There's faith in that money that you have in your pocket. All of us has faith that that's going to get us something. Do you know when you drove here this morning you had tremendous faith? And those double yellow lines that that car would stay on the other side and you'd stay on this side? It's faith. All of us almost walked up this ramp this morning. Did you realize you had faith it wouldn't fall through? Mine was a little shaky, but I had faith that it wouldn't fall through. And what was the first thing that you did when you woke up this morning? You probably flipped the light switch on and you had faith by flipping that light switch on that you would be able to see. Now, all those things we have tried and tested and proved to work. But I want this morning to focus in on our faith in God, which should be much stronger, much greater than any faith we have in human things. Because I tell you, that $5 bill isn't going to buy a cheeseburger much longer. Some places it doesn't now. And last I knew, I read on the interstate that there was 800 car crashes a day in the state of Ohio. They had on the interstate yesterday. So those double yellow lines aren't keeping the cars across the road. And that ramp, it's going to give away one of these days. And folks, the electric goes out. But the one thing we can always do and always know is, God will never let us down Amen. if we focus our faith on Him. That's right. 
So I looked up the dictionary word for faith. Strong belief in God or doctrines of religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Now that's just about as horrible as it can get, I think. So I want to look at a couple verses in Hebrews, chapter 11 and chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The key there is framed by the word of God. Now verse chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who the joy that was set before him endured on the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now to me, that's much greater definition of faith than what the dictionary brings help. Our faith does not have apprehension. Our faith can't go halfway to where we have a strong feeling about something or some doctrine that a man wrote up. And there are no turnarounds when it comes to our faith. We are straight ahead with our plan on those plows looking straight ahead. Each and every day proves faith to us. Number one, you guys are here this morning. That proves faith to me. He leads us, and He gave us the ultimate sacrifice in His Son for faith on to us. Let's look at Ephesians 2.8. Ephesians 2.8 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Through our faith and God's grace we are saved not any other way. We are saved through that. Believe me folks, the world that we live in, number one, wants to do away with Jesus. Have no talking of Him. And they want to test our faith each and every day. Doesn't it feel like when you go somewhere, your faith is tested? Yes. It is. So focusing our faith is so important. And I want to look at two examples of Peter. It was kind of scary for me in Bible class this morning as Mike was talking a lot about Peter. I'm thinking, all right, leave my stuff alone, Mike. Come on now. And he did. I appreciate that, Mike. I want to look at two examples of Peter that has strong faith but lacked the focus and swerved him off the goal. The first is in Matthew 14. We all know these two passages. I'm not giving you anything that you don't know. Matthew 14, 22 through 33. This is Matthew 22 through 33. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer! It is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water 
to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they had gone, when they had got into the boat, and the, the wind ceased, then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Now I want us to look at this a little bit closer. Peter had faith to step out on water. That takes a lot of faith. To climb down out of a boat, step on water, and start walking. It doesn't say he stepped on the boat and immediately sank. He said he had his faith, faith focused on Jesus and he was walking on water. Now to me that is just incredible. Incredible. But what happened? For a split second, his faith became unfocused and it focused on the wind and the rough seas. Did it say he sunk he began to sink and cried out to Jesus save me Lord and Jesus reached out and saved him and he rebuked Peter there by saying ye of little faith it's not that Peter had no faith he allowed his faith to be swerved away from the ultimate prize which is Jesus how many times a day do we allow our faith to be swerved away from Jesus? And we have to say, Jesus, save us. That happens a lot. Now, Peter was pretty, pretty good, and I appreciate all he has in the Bible because he's my second one, too, also. If we want to look at Matthew 26 now. You know this story. Matthew 26, starting verses 1 through 35 and then 69 through 75. So Matthew 26, 31 says, Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after he had been raised, but after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. And Jesus said to him, As surely as I say to you, say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Now, knowing and being with Jesus as long as Peter had been with him, he says, you don't know, Jesus. I know. I know I'm not going to deny you. I know that I'm not going to stumble. I have such strong faith that I'm willing to die with you tonight. So what happened? Let's move down to verse 69. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him, saying, you also were with Jesus in Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath. He denied with an oath, I do not know that the man. And a little later those who stood up or stood by came up and said to Peter surely you also are one of them for your speech betrays you then he began to curse and swear saying I do not know the man immediately a rooster crowed and Peter and Peter remembered the word of Jesus who had said to him before the rooster crows you will deny me three times so he went out and wept bitterly once again Peter allowed his faith to be taken away from Jesus. It's that easy. It's that easy to lose focus. Now me, myself, and I, I would like to say that unlike Peter, I wouldn't have, if I've walked side by side with Jesus, I wouldn't have a problem with this. I'd be able to walk on the water if Jesus told me, and I'd be able to not deny him three times. 
But obviously, it could happen. Yes. And it did happen. So we have to really be careful in who we put our faith in and how we focus our faith on Jesus. It's very, very crucial. Do you know how many things in society distracts us from Jesus? Mike, how many things do you, you've always quoted? How many times a, a day do we get distractions? Hundreds. Hundreds to thousands of distractions a day. Back in this time, I believe, wasn't it around six? Six times you're distracted from Jesus a day. Right now in our society we live in, we have probably thousands of distractions a day. Do you know how many decisions we make every minute? It's probably astronomically when you think about it. You know? It is. So we're so much more vulnerable than what Peter was. But yet, Peter lost his focus on Jesus. So we need to keep our focus truly and foremostly on Jesus. I want to read Psalms 118.8. I think it says really well, much better than I could. Psalms 118.8 It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. That is tremendous. That is tremendous. We want to know the great thing about Peter. We jump back up to Matthew 16. Verse 18, And also I say to you that you are Peter, and the rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Even Peter's weaknesses and his wavering faith, Christ knew he was going to build the rock upon him, this church upon him. Just amazes me that we can lose our faith and that we can come back to Jesus and we're right there. We have to recenter the focus on him. First John 5:14. That's third John, and that's not going to work. First John 5:13 says these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Amen. That's who we need to put our faith in and Amen. focus our faith on is Jesus. Amen. Everything else means nothing. Nothing. We don't have anything else unless we're focused on Jesus and do what he asks. So I'm going to end this, this morning with reading a Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And hopefully that brings out a little bit more to that verse now than it did in the beginning. But before that, I have to ask you this question. Have you lost your focus on Jesus? Have you allowed this world that we live in to provide those distractions in your life? Have you allowed this world to tear you down, to turn your head, to seek out other things other than Jesus to be your main focus in life? If you have, after I read these verses, we'll have a song, and then it's time for you to refocus your life on Jesus. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Amen. We stand and sing. <clears throat>